Thank you very much. Right, a very warm welcome to Jeddah Prep and Grammar School. Uh, a particular uh, welcome now to, we've got just about 50 new children and parents, families joining our family, Jeddah Prep and Grammar School, and a very warm welcome to you. Please. <clears throat> So I'll move on to uh, the, the slide now. I'm not actually controlling the slide, uh, so uh, perhaps a slight delay. But uh, a warm welcome now as the, the headmaster of the school. Uh, so my name is uh, Mr. Mark Bedford, and I've been at the school now. This is my third year at the school. And again, I'm, I'm, I would hope to say that I'm very well acquainted with the school, its ambitions, what we're trying to, to do for our children, which I will go into more detail uh, in a second or two. Next slide, please. So as you can see, as I'm sure you're hopefully already aware with the literature that we provide, Mr. Garnet, next click, please. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Okay, so just aware that we have animations on the slideshow as well. So you can see here the, uh, the mission statement that we have for our school. Now, it is more than just that, and again, the information that we provide to you will go into far more detail, but generally, I would say that uh, what we stand for is synopsized in this sentence, uh, that we are trying to get the very best out of the pupils in front of us, that they are innovative, that they are confident, and that they're reaching their potential in, in different shapes and forms. If I move on to the next slide, and again, just aware that we have animations as well. <clears throat> so we have a quote that should pop up and it's difficult to see this That's from my end. Now, again, I, I think a, a, a comment, a quote from Noam Chomsky a, a while back now, that it is about ultimately what we're trying to do. And I'll elaborate again in the next slide. What we're trying to do is move children away from simply receiving uh, information from us, knowledge from us, that they themselves are able to understand and then transfer that, uh, that knowledge and that wisdom uh, for their benefit later on, uh, particularly as they're getting older. Next slide, please. And if we can add the next click so that all the animations can come up. Again, it's, it's very slow, unfortunately, on, on my uh, computer. You can see that uh, the analogy that I would normally use, again, if this was a normal welcome and we would be in our sports hall and I would be seeing you and talking to you, and unfortunately we're not able to do that uh, at the moment, but this is a journey. And, and what I would say to adults, parents, and to children as well is that what we're trying to do is, is build the, the stepping stones uh, so that we can then journey through the primary and then the secondary cycle, and, that, and then ultimately moving off to the tertiary cycle to university or colleges, which then hopefully then will lead to success, whatever that means in many different shapes and uh, forms, I suppose. But success, again, from, from my point of view as a grammar school head, is that we're opening doors academically for children. And of course, what we want then is that the children are well-rounded and so that they're able to be creative, they're able to be sporty, they're able to be collaborative, they're able to perhaps be creative in, in the widest sense of the word. Mr. Garner, please. So I'm, I'm very fortunate in many ways to, to lead a team of uh, 137 um, employees of the school, predominantly teachers, and we can see the, the Academic offering structure we have here introduced four uh, senior members of staff, and they will be talking about their designated roles in the school. And then I hopefully will also be handing over to, to some of our very accomplished uh, pupils that we have in the school as well. Now, not only do I do I do we have obviously academic members of staff, but we also, uh, Mr. Garner, please. admin staff as well supporting all of the operations uh, of the school. I'll move on to the next slide if I may. Now everything I think at the end of the day particularly now in this remote and virtual way of, of teaching and learning and schooling is uh, done again in a, in a virtual sense on a screen and different things. 
So here uh, I am presenting to you our website and I, I will try to emphasize the fact that our website contains a lot of very useful uh, and relevant information. Mr. Garnet, please. <clears throat> and if I move to, to the next slide, which is our calendar. Now, as said, many of the uh, opening assemblies, the welcomes that you have, I hope, already attended, albeit that, again, uh, we've, we've had three new pupils attend today, so hopefully parents will have received the links and the invitation to come into this meeting uh, today. The calendar is very important. It's, it's perhaps less so because of the, the holidays and, and booking time away from school, but it is making sure that we are maximising our time at school. So children missing education for different reasons, not the best reasons, and again, I'll, I'll maybe just explain what I mean by that. Children, of course, there are health issues, there are things that we need to attend to, but what we're trying to do is limit the time away from school because we do have a number, a finite number of days within which we, we can teach uh, and deliver what we need to do for our classes. So, Mr. Garnet, if I may, again, all of this information is on our website and on Firefly, which I will mention in a little bit as well. So if I now go to uh, another page inside our website and you can see just near the, the top right hand corner, there is a, a tab there which is entitled Calendar. And this is an example of a detailed calendar that we provide. Now, I, I will just say that obviously in a virtual teaching environment that we are in at the moment, there are things that are maybe not quite as straightforward and not quite as, uh, as easy to do. But again, we will be endeavoring to follow the, the calendar that we have um, on our website, again, for your benefit. Mr. Garnet, please. <clears throat> now inside the home tab, again, a very important part of what we do and making sure that we are all coordinated uh, just again on the home tab uh, and the drop down menu there, we have a policies button and there are on our website, there are 24 policies that we present to you, to parents, of course also to our own staff as well. So we go through uh, perhaps training opportunities together, uh, which is what, what we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then also that these policies are available to the wider world as well. Again, I would say that maybe not all policies are relevant to you, but uh, the policies are there for your, um, for your consumption. You can read through and you can see how it is that maybe we will operate perhaps later on as your children grow and progress through different key stages uh, and then to understand what, how it is that we try to, uh, to enable our stakeholders, children particularly, to understand what it is that we're doing. I'll move to the next slide please. And here you can see again on the JPGS news, the top tab that we have here. Now, uh, again, this information is available to you on Firefly. Uh, a lot of information is emailed to you. Uh, so I, I'm aware, I think we all are aware, and, and again, in, in this newer way of, of, of working and, and, and operating, we sometimes have too many emails perhaps coming through. Our inbox is, is full of different things and it's difficult then to understand what the priorities are. Here in letters, again on our website, which again is open to the world, you have the chance maybe to see uh, different things that we're trying to do, uh, announcements, events, lots of different things that will be available for you. Mr. Garnet, please. Thank you. Now, uh, alongside, of course, the, the letters, the information, uh, the policies, again, perhaps things that are a little bit drier uh, and different things that we, we are trying to explain or provide information about uh, to everyone. You also have one of three different uh, options here. So I'm just going to mention the Facebook page that we have. So keeping up to date with events uh, and different things, we will be trying, we do try quite hard to provide information to uh, again, to parents, to staff, to children, if they're old enough as well, and, and making sure that they have their, their, they're able to, to open their Facebook accounts. We also have an Instagram page, and we also have a YouTube, a new YouTube channel uh, that can help to provide maybe some information about what we do in the school, such as tutorials as well. So I'll move to the next page. And this is a, a view of Firefly. 
Now, Firefly, I know for a lot of you, uh, is, is quite new. It, it's, it's something that uh, perhaps uh, is, is a little bit challenging at the beginning, as with all, I would, I would say, all new things. Uh, you can see here uh, our virtual learning environment, and you can actually see a page from a teacher. Now, there are different views of Firefly. Uh, so tasks are assigned on Firefly. Zoom invitations, for example, are sent out normally on Firefly as well. Uh, but you can see here now a view of a teacher's uh, portal, a teacher's perspective on Firefly. Parents also have a view and can access uh, Firefly, the virtual learning environment as well. And you can see lots of different things uh, that we then provide for you. So comments about maybe your child's work, attendance, it could be house points, it could be lots of different things that are provided for you. So this is very much the centralized platform for the school for making sure that at the moment, whilst we are virtual and re remote learning, the children can access in one place without it being, being too disparate and, and too difficult to, to navigate through. What, what we then try to do as, as staff, as teachers in the school, is to see that everything is put together for your benefit on one page. I'll move to the next slide. And I think at this juncture, uh, I will introduce uh, Mr. Khalil Ahmed, who is the deputy head, and he is the head of grammar school. Now, Khalil has been with the school now for just over a year, and I think he will perhaps welcome us from possibly a sunny London uh, at the moment. Mr. Ahmed, please. Thank you, Mr. Bedford. Uh, a very warm welcome to all our new parents. Um, I hope you're all well. I know we've had a week uh, and a bit uh, in terms of getting used to the systems in school. Um, I know that um, moving and changing schools is never an easy decision. It's always something that, you know, uh, you have to research and you have to look at what are the key reasons, the key factors that you've chosen a school. Uh, and I'm sure that your decision uh, in terms of um, choosing JPGS was informed by a, fa a number of factors. And I'd say probably top of your list would be the teaching and learning, the outstanding teaching and learning here, uh, the attainment and progress of the children. So that's another key factor I'm sure that you're thinking of when you're choosing the best school for your children. And also, as Mr. Bedford said, um, developing well-rounded individuals and well-rounded individuals who are going to take their rightful place in a sort of society that's globally aware. Um, and that's very important for us, that the, the pupils are aware and you know globally aware and globally responsible individuals and i think that's very important for for us as a school um, and you know certainly um one of the key things that i mentioned earlier was attainment and progress and i think if we just jump to the next slide which will give us some headline figures as to how successful and outstanding this school has been um, and to give you this year's uh data on the A-level results, that's those pupils that have completed 13 years of education and left to go off to university, 100% achieved A star to C, and we had 74.5% of the pupils achieving an A star and an A. And I'm sure you'll agree that they are outstanding results. And if you look at the data for the last five years, again, you can see that year on year, there's been an increase in the attainment and the results of the children, which shows, uh, certainly shows an increase and an improvement in the quality of education and the outcomes and what we, what progress the children make. And so that's our year 13. If we have a look at our year 12 or end of year 12, that's our AS results. Again, you can see these are the children that have completed 12 years of education are going into the final year before they start to apply uh, for university. And again, you can see uh, A star, sorry, A to, A to C, because A star is not in the year 12, then the year 13. The grade A to C, 90.6% of uh, AS exams that were taken. And of that, 57.6%, more than half of the pupils, and that's quite a large cohort, achieved a grade A at AS. And so that sets them up very well in terms of a fantastic foundation to begin their university applications uh, where their predicted grades will be shared with the admissions tutors 
for them to be starting to apply and get the very best offers for university. Now, if we have a look at the GCSE results, that's the end of year 11. Again, similar, uh, a similar pattern. And you can see of our 50 pupils uh, who sat the GCSE results, you've got 92.9% .9 achieving A star to C. That's a significant number of pupils. And I have to say, these are outstanding results. And so congratulations to the students, the pupils, their parents, and obviously our staff. And again, if you look, more than half of those pupils achieved an A star or an A in all of the subjects that were taken. So the key point that I mentioned earlier about the factors of why you've chosen this school, one of the best schools for your children, would probably be the teaching and the learning and the attainment and the outcomes at the end of a key stage, whether that's key stage four or key stage five. Um, so that gives you a little overview of the headline results for this school. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. And then, as Mr. Bedford said, the journey, the journey continues. So the journey for us, in terms of the pathways for the children, is getting them to the best universities and making sure that they have got the prerequisites to get to those universities. And as you can see, this is a uh, a, a short list of some of the university that our pupils have actually got to. And you can see there are a number of Russell Group universities. Uh, There's some overseas universities in terms of not UK, but Canada. Um, but we have had all of our pupils who have actually got first place offers at their university. So that again is uh, very successful for us, for our school. Uh, if you could jump to the next slide, please. Thank you. And then in terms of the degree, so we, I mentioned the word pathways, uh, I mentioned the word progress, outcomes, all of these are important because it is making sure that the pupils have the right set of subjects and the right options to be able to apply for the right courses that they wish to do at university. And here you see a whole range of courses that our pupils have got into and have been very successful. So again, we offer that, we have a new head of sixth form um, who is, ex is an experienced head of sixth form, has worked with um, pupils in terms of university preparation, uh, university counselling. So we are very fortunate to make sure that this, this path, this pattern um, continues with our current cohort of year 13 and 12. Uh, if you'd like to just go to the next slide, please. Uh, on that note, thank you very much. Uh, we are here to help. Um, as I said at the start, it is never an easy decision to be moving schools, especially in this particular climate. Uh, and we are here to help. Anything that you need, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Just before I uh, introduce uh, Mr. Garnett, and, and I'll just, just maybe reinforce now what Mr. Ahmed has said, uh, I, I think we are very proud of our pupils. So we, we are, again, we are a grammar school. Uh, what we what we try to impress upon our young pupils is the fact that um, the academic success can open doors later on for them and, and I, I hope and I, I presume that uh, parents here uh, in the welcome that you do fully appreciate that you you understand that I do understand that at the same time that young children obviously this is a way away but this is ultimately the destination that we would like to see, which is, and again, the point of what I'm saying now is that children basically are given their first choices at university. So what they want themselves to do later on, and, you, and uh, perhaps the, the previous uh, couple of slides, the destinations, it is the children themselves that are selecting as a first choice, let's say the University of Bristol, that's where they want to go to study law, and, and it is that we are then hopefully, we are then supporting them realize uh, that ambition, that aspiration. Now, at this point, I will jump a little bit backwards and we'll, we'll start maybe where it, we should be starting, which is in the, the early years and then in, in the prep school. And at this point, I will welcome uh, Mr. Raymond Garnett, uh, our head of prep school, and perhaps a few words from him. Now, Ray, I know has been at the school uh, for many years, and I will say at least five years, has been at the school uh, and a welcome to Ray and, and I'll hand over to you now. 
thank you, Mr. Pitford. I just want to check if you can hear me. I just stop the share there for a second. Yes, I can hear. Thank you. Um, so good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and, and any of the pupils that might be sitting next to you. Uh, a very warm welcome uh, to Gender Prep and Grammar School. Uh, many of you have been in numerous parent induction meetings over the last two weeks with us. Uh, and we certainly do hope that the meetings have been informative uh, and you're feeling a little bit more settled. So I've been at the school for five years. I've been very, very proud to be part of the school. I feel very privileged to be part of the school and certainly part of a lovely uh, family. So my passion for education, I think, is, is certainly in my blood with both my parents being teachers themselves. And I think that's what's led me to this profession. And with my parents also being uh, spending some time in Saudi Arabia uh, has kind of led me to, to link up with Jeddah Prep in some way. And I'm very, very happy that I've been given the opportunity to be part of a good, a good staff um, and a good school. And we work extremely hard every day, not only just the teachers, but everybody in the school to achieve the school's mission statement that Mr. Bedford went with, through with you earlier. So we've shared some fantastic results uh, through IGCSE and, and A-Level, AS and, and, and the A-Levels are year 13s and they went to some fast, fantastic universities. But that end of the learning journey does need to begin somewhere. And many of those students have been with us uh, through their whole 13 years of education. And the prep school sets a nice, found out for, uh, a nice found, solid foundation for the learning to continue up into the grammar school. So it really is a big team effort. In, the, in April of 2018, uh, Jeddah Prep and Grammar School registered uh, to deliver the Cambridge primary cur cur curriculum. Uh, we still very much follow the national curriculum uh, as well, but the Cambridge primary curriculum helps us support uh, our delivery uh, in English, maths and science. In, in September of 2018, uh, we fully took on the Cambridge primary curriculum and I've had a full year um, delivering this to the students. And even though we did have uh, some time where we, we've had to teach virtually, we certainly were well prepared and have been able to support the, the, the pupils appropriately uh, and to continue to um, supporting them uh, through our virtual learning time as well. Um, the full implementation of Cambridge Primary is through for, for years one through to year six. Our early years and foundation stage follow the Development Matters curriculum um, and we then assess through the early learning goals and Mrs. Gulzar, our early years coordinator, will be able to go into more detail with you as early as tends to be a lot more hands-on with the parents um, and the families as a whole and as the students become more independent you kind of leave us off to the teachers um, and certainly still support as parents but but maybe from a little bit more of a distance the cambridge primary curriculum is still recognized please it's not a different curriculum but it's certainly still recognized as a british curriculum um, and to support our internal assessment, the pupils in year three to year five complete the Cambridge progression assessments. And this supports the school by identifying areas of strength and weaknesses so that future planning can be adjusted to challenge and support different year groups as well as the individual pupils. And this target setting does become very, very important certainly as they then move up into the grammar school and they're starting to think about those careers as well. So we try and get that on the right path um, as early as possible. The year six pupils complete the Cambridge checkpoint assessment. This is slightly different to the progression assessment and this assessment will cover all the learning objectives that they cover during their time in key stage two. This is an external assessment similar to the IGCSEs and the fact that it's provided by Cambridge themselves. Um, and this provides the, the benefits of this is that it provides the school with an international benchmark. So we can now compare ourselves to the rest of the world and the other schools that write the Cambridge checkpoint exams, rather than us just saying we are the best, we actually have 
there's you know there's proof in the pudding we can we can actually say that we are uh, in different areas and again this this helps us to identify strengths and weaknesses as a school and also provide those year six pupils who are who move up into the grammar school with appropriate support and challenges um, and targets to support their learning moving forward so we do really prepare them as well as we can to take that next step in the journey into the grammar school if you'd obviously like more information about our curriculum of study please do contact myself um, or one of the other key stage managers that your 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 child might be in and we can arrange a suitable time to discuss the curriculum with you we are more than more than happy to spend time with you um, and and make things clearer if you do have any misconceptions and then just finally i'd like to again just welcome you to the school we're really glad that you chose jetta prep and grammar school as your as your school of choice i'm sure you're feeling overwhelmed with all the busyness of starting a new school and perhaps moving country and and all these things and then still the things we have to deal with with corona but please believe me that your children are in good hands um, not only in the prep school in the whole school um, and your children will settle in well they will enjoy their learning journey at Jetta prep and grammar school and we certainly wish them all the best um, in, the, in the in the days and months and years that they will have their journey with us so thank you very much Thank you very much, Mr. Garnett. We'll move to the next slide and I will introduce another senior colleague uh, in the school and Mr. Shazad is the DSL. Uh, so this term is, is used very much in uh, UK curriculum schools. So we, we are uh, very proud to be a COBIS school and the BSME school. Uh, so lots of Britishness in, in what we do, uh, which generally means that uh, the pastoral side of the school uh, supports and underpins all of the academic uh, endeavours that we, we try to instill and provide for, for our pupils, our children. Uh, Mr. Shazad has been with the school now for five years. Uh, Mr. Shazad, please, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Bedford. Uh, good evening, parents. A warm welcome to Jeddah Prep and Grammar School. As the designated safeguarding lead, my focus is the well-being and safety of your children. I lead the pastoral teams in school. At Jedi Prep and Grammar School, we want to give the pupils a rounded experience, which Mr. Ahmed was alluding to. How do we do this? We want to create an environment that is both caring and challenging, which encourages risk and provides our pupils uh, a step out of their comfort zone. Uh, we do this through our curriculum and through our vast uh, uh, extracurricular activities, such as the School Council, the Duke of Edinburgh International Award, the model United Nations through activities such as uh, music, photography and enterprise. How do we provide support to your children? The first port of call in the grammar it would be the tutor and in the prep school we have the class teachers. The tutors and the class teachers will see your children every day. Every morning they will register and they will check in, check up with your uh, child. So any concerns will all be reported to the tutor as the first port of call. Your child will also have a key stage leader as well. So if they have any concerns, they can go to their key stage leader. We want to work in, with, in partnership with you to promote the well-being of uh, the children. And We've had a fantastic uh, week uh, virtual uh, through the virtual school. It's been very, very successful. The feedback from our from the pupils has been very, very good. Parents have also noted uh, how good it's been. The pupils have enjoyed being back at, uh, being back learning. And one thing that I would like to raise, and it's some points that I would like parents to consider, uh, ju it's just to improve the learning for uh, for the pupils. And that is to make sure your child is going to uh, bed early uh, and getting up at a reasonable time. They have breakfast, which is very important, so they are alert. And it's important that they are studying in an environment that is conducive, conducive to learning. So it's quiet and they will not get distracted. And it's also very important that they, are, they communicate with teachers tutors and heads of key stage so if there's anything that they do not understand it's important that they talk to their teachers they communicate with their teachers they can do that through a wide variety of way 
most notably it will be the school email and through messages on Fireflag. But as I've said, we have a dedicated safeguarding team at school and Mr. Bedford alluded to policies. I would strongly encourage you to read the safeguarding policy, which we have recently updated and it is on the school website. Thank you. Mr. Shazad, thank you very much. I uh, will we'll pass over to the next slide. And, and uh, so just again, just making sure that we are uh, clear. We, we do understand that children are different ages. So we start at three years old and we go right the way up to 18 years old. Uh, I think calling them children when they're 18 is, is, is not received in the most positive way. Uh, but anyway, young adults that are about to leave and then go off to university. So I'm aware that not every child in the school has an email address, but everyone, as I said earlier, our centralized platform for learning virtually at the moment uh, is through Firefly. So if there is any need to communicate, uh, do remember that parents that you have got all of our email addresses on Firefly. Typically, a lot of our correspondents will also provide lots of contacts, lots of things maybe that you can use. And again, particularly primarily if your child is a little bit younger, and then is, is less able to access certain things, perhaps by themselves. Uh, without further ado, I will uh, move to Mr. Thomas McDonough. Now, uh, Mr. McDonough is our SendCo, uh, and we, we tend to, in schools, we tend to use uh, lots of uh, words and acronyms and, and jargon, perhaps when it comes to education. Our SendCo, SendCo is our Special Educational Needs and Disabilities Coordinator. Mr. McDonough, over to you, please. Um, hello everyone, good afternoon and I hope you're keeping safe during these um, strange times and welcome to Jeddah Prep and Grammar School. As Mr Bedford said, I'm the Special Educational Needs and Disabilities Coordinator and it's my second year here at the school and in this role. Essentially my job is to coordinate any additional support that students may require. Um, this might be due to a diagnosis of a specific need or it could be because a student is not making the expected progress. Um, Either way, one aspect of my role is helping you as parents to arrange assessments with external professionals, such as educational psychologists, if it's felt that that would benefit the student. In my role, I ensure that staff are aware of students' needs and I support the staff to try and cater for students' needs within their lessons through high quality differentiated teaching. And that really is the key to the inclusive learning environment that we aim to create here at Jeddah Prep and Grammar School. Where additional support on top of that is needed, I will work closely with you as parents and the students concerned in order for us to all determine what the best course of action is and what the best support is. Um, as my colleagues have said throughout this presentation, throughout this meeting this afternoon, good communication is the key to that. There will be bumps in the road, but as long as we're communicating well and we're open and honest with each other, I have no doubt that we can overcome those bumps in the road. Once again, Thank you for your time today and welcome to Jedi Prep and Grammar School. Thank you, Mr. McDonough. Uh, well, well, just before we hand over to uh, hopefully uh, some of the head team here, some of the year 13s, we'll just, I, I will just emphasize the point that everyone is different. Everyone requires perhaps a slightly different approach. Uh, we have different temperaments, different inclinations, different aspirations. And, and again, as a school, what we're trying to do is embrace all of our pupils and try to encourage and achieve the very best for them. Now, I will say that the pinnacle then, therefore the slide that we can see uh, perhaps in front of us, I do hope either Hadia or Saif Farah Amar that you are with us. I'm not sure if we can unmute and I'm not sure which order perhaps, but we have the head team just as they are maybe trying to find their voices. Uh, I do hope that they're here. Hi, sir. And that is Hadia. It sounds like Hadia. Hadia, was that you? Yes, hi. Hadia, yeah. that, that's good. It's, are any others with us now, please? I think I did speak to Amar. Hi, sir. Uh, Farah, is that you? Yeah. I can't see. I can see. A, a hi, sir. How are you safe? I can hear you now. Right, I'm now. I'm good. We have not properly rehearsed this, as I, th I think the, the invitation went out to the head team uh, quite, uh, quite recently. However, uh, as, as I have already mentioned, we now have four individuals from year 13.
they will perhaps go through a little bit themselves what it is that uh, they are doing, where they see themselves going uh, in a few short months with, with A-levels completed and then university destinations, uh, I'm sure, ahead of them. And then perhaps a little bit about their time at the school. May I pass over to Hadia because you're top of the list here. I mean, there's no particular order. But over to, maybe to Hadia, please, first. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hadia, and I am this year's head girl. This is my fifth and final year at JPGS, after which I plan on attending university in either the US or Canada. So I've traveled to different schools, but I can safely say that JPGS is my favorite out of all of them. Uh, in my opinion, JPGS stands out from other schools, uh, from the different enrichments they offer, to the amazing teachers and welcoming students, even with online learning. Um, one of the most unique aspects of JP, in my opinion, um, is how many student bodies we have, uh, such as the student council, student council, well-being ambassadors and head team, which really makes you feel like you're part of a well-knit and understanding community. Um, so if students have any ideas they'd like to share or bring forward with the school, they can contact me or any other members of the head team. And I hope that everyone enjoys this year and hopefully we're back in school soon. Thank you. Thank you, Hadia. Safe, please. Uh, hello, hello everyone. My name is Saif Al-Banna and I'm the current head boy in the Pepin Grammar School. Uh, so uh, I joined JPGS in year two. I'm in my 12th and final year in the school. Uh, Last year in AS, I took uh, four sciences, biology, chemistry, math, and physics, and I created them all into A2. Um, JPGS is a really well-organized and uh, widely diverse school that gives you the opportunity to focus on both academics and not neglect uh, extracurriculars at the same time. Uh, so, for example, I'm really passionate about basketball, but I never, I never struggled to uh, practice basketball in school and at the same time, uh, same time maintain or keep up with my schoolwork. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, all our new students uh, find comfort and joy in the school and uh, good luck to everyone. So thank you very much. Farah, please. Hi everyone, I'm Farah Bakhsh and I'm um, in year 13 and this is my 13th and last year in JP. I'm deputy head girl and I'm taking biology, chemistry and maths for A2 as I plan on doing medicine next year for university either in the UK or the US. And I can say that in all of my 13 years in JP, it's been um, a really long but an exciting time in my life. And I can say that JP has really prepared me for the future when it came in terms of um, enrichment and academics. And I really do hope that all of our new students will, able to make, will be able to make use of all of the help provided in order to achieve their goals. And as the new head team, everyone's always welcome to ask us anything at any time. And we hope you guys all have a good time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amma, please, if, if I pass to you now, please. Um, good evening. My name is uh, Amar Vora. I'm the deputy head boy for this year. Uh, and um, I would like to say that this school has uh, given me a wonderful experience. This is my seventh and last year in this school. And um, I'd like to say I have had a wonderful time in this school. And uh, I think the worst part about this is, that, is the fact that I have to graduate this year and I cannot be here for another year. I think that's very disappointing to me. But I have thoroughly enjoyed my time in the school and uh, I plan on studying uh, medieval history in the UK next year. And um, I, if I have to say something, I came from a very different atmosphere and I wasn't a very confident child and I was very afraid and confused most of the time. But the school has a very friendly atmosphere. So I don't think there is any, so I think that if there is confusion, it will probably go away in the first week and because it is a very, very friendly atmosphere and I have enjoyed my time and hopefully you will too. Thank you. Oh, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, that, that brought a little tear to my eye, what, what, what you said there. Thank you very much to the, the four of you. And I, I think, again, uh, communication, teams, teamwork, togetherness, there are lots of different things that, that we try to do here. And I think at the end of the day, you can see now Year 13s who uh, I hope uh, are going to have a very successful year. I hope it's, it will be physical and I hope it will be face-to-face -face, uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, we'll move to the, uh, Mr. Gunnar, the next click, please, as well. So we'll move to, uh, of course,
children, the journey, so starting school at three or four, five years old, seven, whatever it might be, and then ultimately young adults uh, leaving to go to uh, continue their journey and continue their successes in their own individual lives. And that's ultimately what we as adults, we as teachers, but also we as parents, uh, what we want for our children, our pupils in our school. Now you can see here, uh, and I'm not going to read through the, the list, it's a short list, there's lots and lots of research about uh, the positive impact of parents and upbringing and, and lots of different things that will help uh, young people achieve better uh, in school. I will just point out one thing that maybe is not what we would like uh, from parents, which is that parents are perhaps overly involved in the pupils' work. Now we know that parents are very well intentioned, and that maybe completing a task or helping the child, in other words, doing it for them. But what we want to do as teachers is that we want them to learn. And, and I would say, as I've heard in many assemblies, and many welcome uh, meetings already, is that we do expect and we do require sometimes that children make mistakes. And in fact, I would say that the only time that children do actually learn in a better sense is that they do realize that, well, actually, this is not quite right, but next time it will be right. And again, I ju just say to, to parents, being involved, being enthusiastic, as you can see on the list here, uh, maybe helping sit down and, and read through something with your child and say that that's really good or, or praise or comments, but maybe not doing the work for your child, please. So I'll move to the next penultimate uh, slide. We've got uh, two slides and then a thank you at the end. So not, not too long to go. Uh, and if Mr. Garnett, if you can click the next animation as well. <clears throat> and you can see here, I would say, some of the underpinning principles that we have uh, at the school. Now, there are seven here. Uh, I will go down to perhaps near the, near the end of this list here, which is about accreditation. So the school excellence and accreditation and standards and best, best practice. As I've said earlier, uh, we are very proud to be a COBIS school. Uh, there aren't that many COBIS schools, endorsed and accredited COBIS schools around the world. Uh, we're also very proud of our other affiliations as well. I've mentioned BSME, for example. Uh, Mr. Shazad mentioned the International Award, the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award as well. So lots of different uh, groups and, and bodies that we belong to. Uh, but accreditation is something that we uh, tried to do uh, on the 5th, 6th and 7th of April. But unfortunately, and I'll, I'll mention this maybe on the next slide as well, but unfortunately we had a pandemic. Uh, we had to then uh, cancel this. We had to postpone this. It was, can it was postponed until our uh, inspection was uh, postponed until the end of October. It's very likely now that we will have to again push that back because again, uh, virtually inspecting a school uh, is not easy and I don't think is, is possible. Uh, so again, you can see here on this slide seven different principles that underpin what we try to do at the school uh, to help and benefit the children in our care. I'll move to the next slide, please. <clears throat> and this is slide number 28, 29. So the penultimate slide now. Uh, now, again, we have alluded to, we've mentioned COVID-19 uh, a number of times. Uh, we get, were provided, uh, I was actually telephoned by the Ministry of Education on the, the 8th of March in the evening uh, to be told that uh, we would no longer be working uh, physically, that we needed to, to work remotely. And that took place from the 9th of March onwards. Now, unfortunately, um, I mean, again, I was hopeful over the summer months that perhaps we could see uh, maybe children coming in, maybe not all the time, but sometimes. Uh, but again, the minister uh, has made it very clear that this will be reviewed perhaps in the middle of October and that we will then see uh, what it is that we are able or not able to do. Now, uh, what I'm showing you here is that we've already, as a school, uh, we have provided lots and lots of detailed information to the Ministry of Education so we provided lots of different thoughts about how we can safely engage with children. It could be that they are all back in school. It could be that they are back in school sometimes. And again, we've provided lots and lots of information to the ministry, including, of course, our uh, 
uh, as Mr. Shazad mentioned as well, the safeguarding policy, please do read through that, but also the vir virtual learning policy that, that we've adopted uh, at the start of this academic year. Ultimately, what, what I'm trying to, to do is reassure you that when we get a, a, the green light perhaps to allow children to come back into the school, uh, we are ready, uh, we are prepared, and in fact, I think we are all looking forward perhaps to putting COVID-19 behind us as, as formally and, and as forcefully as we can and as soon as we can, all right? Now, I think as many of my colleagues and uh, the, the uh, year 13s uh, have already said, a warm welcome to the school, a warm welcome to Jeddah Prep and Grammar School. I think I shall look forward, uh, Mr. Garnet, if we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you very much. I shall look forward to the day, and I hope that this is very soon, that I will actually be able to meet with you in person, collectively, that would be good. Um, of course, with all of the sensible precautions and measures in place, uh, if that is the case as well. A warm welcome to the school. I do hope that you are happy. I do hope that you're feeling settled. I do hope that your children, more importantly, are feeling happy and settled. Do remember, as, as has been said by uh, most of my colleagues here, most of my senior colleagues here, if there is something that you're not clear about, I do understand at the beginning, it's, it's been week one and one day, but if there is something that you are still unsure about, please do not just allow that to continue. Please do contact a member of my team and we will be more than happy to try and help you on your road, your journey with us over the coming years now. A warm welcome to the school. And I will wish us all a very positive start and a very positive academic year. Thank you very much for attending the, the presentation.